I want to go on to the voice because you've just had the first elections in this state for a state-based Indigenous voice. Given how emphatic the rejection of the constitutionally enshrined national voice was, uh, both across the country and in your own state, it didn't give you pause to rethink whether or not people wanted this? Yeah, it's a good question. We legislated our voice, which was a, the proposition that at one point Peter Dutton and the Coalition were adv advocating for, to have a legislated voice rather than a constitutionally enshrined one. So we legislated our state-based based voice to the parliament at the beginning of last year, well in advance of the referendum. And it's exactly what we committed to the people of South Australia we would do. We've now had those elections. It's a non-binding advisory committee that will offer a view to the parliament. And I don't see that being a, a wasteful exercise. I don't see it being a costly exercise. It is simply an opportunity for people to provide advice whether or not the parliament chooses to take it up will be another matter. You've just had the elections, though, and less than 10% of those people eligible to vote for voice representatives actually turned out and voted. In, in yeah. one region, less than 200 people voted. Some people have been voted onto Indigenous voice committees with six or a dozen votes. But Doesn't this mean that the whole thing will lack authority? So the, the volume of votes that we saw was consummate to what we saw with ATSIC. So... You know, we don't expect a, a turnout. It's not compuls a high turnout. It's not compulsory voting. But more than that, Chris, what you refer to there aren't the people that are going to be speaking in the parliament. Um, the voice will have to choose two people only, one male, one female, who will be able to provide a voice to the parliament. Um, so there's a, still a, a substantial process that needs to be gone through before someone is eligible to actually make a contribution to the parliament in that advisory way. But doesn't that lack of buy-in, the... the, the, the incredibly small number of people who have bothered to cast a vote mean that whoever speaks in Parliament won't really have the authority of representing Indigenous people in the state. Well, we think they will have a degree of authority because it will be a democratically chosen body who simply can offer advice to the Parliament. Now, what's the alternative, Chris? The alternative is that we don't have a forum where Aboriginal people provide advice on policy that affects them. And how far, is that, how far has that got us so far? Uh, we don't see the gap being closed and we know that there is work. Now, I don't suggest for one moment that having an advisory body fixes every problem, but I don't think it can do any harm, and particularly a legislated one, which means that in the future it'll be open to governments, mine or others, to amend it, uh, choose to recalibrate it if they think there are deficiencies within it, which is why it's so fundamentally different to what was being proposed federally, which is a constitutionally enshrined model. That meant, of course, once it was there, it would always be there. Now, you haven't finished uh, one term of parliament yet. Uh, you just uh, won a by-election where the, the former Premier uh, uh, left his seat and you've pinched that seat from him, the Labor Party winning, winning that seat. So um, y you're travelling very well. Some, uh, some of the major bank surveys say the South Australian economy is the best in the country at the moment. I can't remember that happening oh. in my lifetime. You're travelling pretty well. Uh, has anyone from Canberra knocked on your door and asked whether you might want to switch to federal politics at some stage? Honestly, Chris, I, I feel, and I, I don't want to sound cliche, but I feel so privileged having this responsibility. The state is in a really good spot and we do have a degree of momentum. I mean, you'll be familiar with South Australia's economic history, Chris. Um, 12 years ago, people were desperately concerned about how South Australians were going to find work in the future when we lost the car industry. Uh, and now we've got the lowest unemployment rate in the country. So but we see that momentum being able to be built upon to set us up for the long term and that's what I'm committed to is our, this job is big enough as it is. Well, let's talk, talk footy because uh, Adelaide and South Australia are the centre of the footy world this weekend with the Gather Round. Absolutely. I, I was here for last year's inaugural Gather Round. An idea, to be fair, kind of pinched from the NRL. Yep. The one, uh, gee, it worked brilliantly last year and the vibe in Adelaide this year is incredible. You must be wrapped with this whole event. There are already uh, other states sort of enviously eyeing it off and saying they want to pinch it. We are, and we've, we're grateful for the partnership we've got with the AFL, but I'm actually more grateful to the people from interstate who are coming here to make it happen. The event only works because of people, Chris, right? So we could put all 18 clubs in the one place at the one time and that'll make it unique, but unless people travel to enjoy it, 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 it doesn't have the magic. And our city and our state comes alive over the course of these next few days, and we're really proud of that. The thing that's most important to me is the economic opportunity and the platform it prevent, presents for us to show South Australia to the rest of the country in a different light. There's something else you mentioned at the Gather Round function last night that really interested me because it's something I, that I think about and talk about a lot, and that is the role of Aussie rules bringing people together. Yeah. It's an incredibly 
egalitarian sport. Yeah. There'll be as many women as men at the Adelaide Oval tonight. There'll be people from all ethnic backgrounds, all creeds. They share this game like no other. And you said last night this is important. Aussie rules is important now because we've got such a polarised political debate. We've got to learn as a country to make sure we've still got the ability to disagree, agree and do it civilly. And footy gives us a mechanism to do that. You're a passionate Crows man. I'm a diehard port man. And we, we can... speak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and people, you know, we've got to make sure that we don't end up in the United States where, you know, Republican voters move to Republican states and Democratic voters move to Democratic states. We are one country and we've got to learn to agree and to disagree. And footy is just this beautiful mechanism that brings people together um, as a unique code that no one else owns apart from our country. And I think that's worthy of celebration. In fact, I think it's worthy of investment and gather around does something unique in that regard. Well, let's hope the Crows get a win tonight and uh, I hope you have a great weekend. You too, thanks, Chris.